Project Workbench. Hello and welcome to another Project Workbench exclusive tutorial video. In this video, what I'm going to do is walk you through a buildup of one of my multi-pass kits. Now, of course, a multi-pass is a prop from the movie The Fifth Element, which is actually one of my favorite movies of all time. If you don't already have one of my Fifth Element kits, I'm going to put a link to my Etsy store below. So click on that, order a kit, and then you'll be able to follow along. I've already documented this tutorial on my blog pretty thoroughly, but as the kit has evolved when new information comes to light, I've made subtle changes to the build. This video will serve as the most up-to-date current tutorial to build my multi-pass kit. Except no imitations. <laughs> Now the good news is if you want to follow along on the blog and use that as a reference, for the most part you can. There's going to be a whole lot of overlap between what's in this video and what's on the blog with only a few changes which I will point out as we go along. I'm also going to include in the about section a shopping list which will show you all the tools and supplies that you need in order to complete this tutorial. Unbox and confirm your kit is complete. I hate unboxing videos, I really do. But this one's important because I want to make sure that all the pieces that you're going to need to build your multipass are actually there. And what I'm also going to do in this section is give you some terminology for the different parts because I will refer to them throughout the rest of the video. We have a mid plate, a top plate, a bottom plate, the bullet, styrene strips, disc, thick disc, thin disc, yellow vinyl, LED surround, acrylic rod, acrylic dome, LED. Step styrene strip. That's it. All of those pieces should be included in your kit. If they're not, let me know. Remove paper backing. I recommend putting all of your other pieces that won't be using this step in a plastic container just to keep them out of the way and so you won't lose one. This step's actually pretty simple. The idea here is we're just peeling the adhesive paper off each of the styrene pieces. One of the byproducts of the laser cutting process is this paper. I guess when they lay the styrene sheets out on the laser cutter bed, it has this paper on it. I don't know if all laser cutters do that, but the one I used to cut my pieces out did. So there's really nothing complicated to it. I'm just using my thumbnail here to kind of get the corner started, and then I peel the rest off. Every piece you see on the screen, including the mid plate, the top plate, and the bottom plate, and all of the different discs, need to have both sides peeled. To my knowledge, there's no way to speed this up. Give all styrene pieces a light sanding. I'm using some 600 grit sandpaper, which you can get at Home Depot or an automotive supply store. And the goal here really is just to knock the surface down a little bit. Some of the edges will have a little bit of burn over where the laser cutter might have melted a little too much. Just very subtle. And we also want to give it a uh, light sanding so that when we go to prime this with our automotive primer, that the plastic has some tooth to it so the primer can bite into it. It just breaks up the surface and cleans it up also. You'll notice I'm going over the edges lightly Again, just to take some of the laser cutting artifacts out of the edges. Assembling the battery case. The battery case is a sub-assembly that goes on the back side of the multipass, and it consists of two pieces, one of the discs and one of the thin rings. Here I'm using a styrene cement. This particular one is from Testers Plastruct also makes a great cement. And I'm using the brush that comes in the lid to just make a little ring of glue around the edge. You don't need to be precise. I guess my only note here is not to use too much. If you use too much, you'll melt the styrene. It'll goop out all over the place. Here I'm tapping it on the surface I'm using to make sure it's aligned as best as I can get it. And we're going to sand this when it's done. So it doesn't need to be super precise, but definitely do your best. Also note, I'm working on a clean work area. This happens to be a sheet of MDF. I would recommend you find a clean area to do your work so that if little pieces get dropped or go missing, uh, you won't have much trouble finding them. Once the glue has had a chance to dry, I'm taking my 600 grit sandpaper and again just going over those edges really lightly. The goal here isn't really to knock it down or reshape it, just to make sure those edges are smooth and don't have any of the laser cutting artifacts left over or any blobs of glue. Modify the front and back plates to be more accurate. 
So here we have the front plate on top, the back plate on bottom. You can tell the difference because the front has a little square cut out for the LED. What I noticed over the years of developing this is that an error was introduced into my multipass. And the way we're going to fix it is to cut a little piece off. Right now I'm pointing at those arches in the multipass. We're going to use those as alignment points so we can make sure we're removing the correct strip. I'm taping one of them down to my piece of MDF just to keep it steady. And I'm taking what is the back plate and I'm aligning those grooves that I just pointed to. See where I'm pointing to that groove? I'm aligning those. So now I'm taping the top piece in place so that all those grooves line up. I'm using just blue painter's tape that you can get at Home Depot, maybe AutoZone, maybe Amazon. Precision isn't super key here, but the more precise you get it, the better your kit's going to be. Now, you see that little lip there on the bottom piece? We want to remove that. So I'm using an X-Acto knife here, and because that piece on the top is giving me a lip that I'm going to follow, I'm doing that. I'm just cutting right along that edge, and I'm scoring it. I'm just doing shallow cuts. It's another important tip about cutting styrene. You're far better off doing multiple shallow cuts than trying to get it all in one cut. And also doing shallow cuts, you don't have to apply as much pressure, which can lead to slippage and mistakes. Believe me, the cuts on my index fingers are a testament to that fact. Here I'm just pointing out the cut I made, which is actually more of a score than a cut. And now I'm using a straight edge to continue the cut. Notice the cut goes all the way across. So I'm lining up my ruler against that score that I made that wasn't all the way across. It was just about three quarters. And now I'm doing multiple shallow cuts. And there it is. That little piece just popped off. Now my top plate is accurate. So the original kit included that little extra lip, and we just removed it. And now we're going to do the same for the other plate. So here I am taping down the bottom plate to my piece of MDF. And that's the part I just cut off, that part I just showed. So I'm lining up my arches again, top and the bottom. And then I'm going to take blue painters tape again and tape that top plate down on top of my bottom plate. And now we're in the same situation again. We've got it lined up so that the part we need to cut off is visible. You can see it there over on the left already, that little thin strip. And so I'm going to take my X-Acto knife again, and I'm going to do a couple thin swipes. I'm just scoring it. My goal is not to cut all the way through here. I just want to mark it. Ugh, can you imagine if that X-Acto slipped that it chopped my index finger right down the middle? Ow! Okay, so now we're removing all the blue tape, getting the bottom plate freed up, and then I'm going to take my trusty straight edge ruler, line it up against the score mark I just made, and I'm going to extend that cut across the entirety of that piece. So notice I'm doing multiple shallow cuts, not applying too much pressure. Oh, God, my fingers, how do I even have them anymore? So each one goes a little deeper, and then it just pops off. And now the bottom plate is more accurate. And I'm going to go back in with my 600 grit sandpaper and knock down that edge that probably got pushed up through the process of cutting. I'm going to get it on both sides to make sure it's nice and smooth. And I'm not trying to round off that edge, just trying to make sure it's flat on both sides. Now just as a test, I'm going to line up the top plate to the mid plate. And you can see right along the top there, that piece now goes straight across, and we have that little lip there. The next part of this tutorial will be available soon on my YouTube channel. Please subscribe so that you're notified when it's out. If you have any questions, please be sure to comment below in the comment section and let me know if there's anything in this tutorial that you felt was unclear or needs clarification. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you for the next one.